everyone. Uh, welcome to uh, the afternoon session here. Um, we've got a few talks coming up. Uh, our first talk is by Sylvia Yap. She's a fellow Reese Techian. I'm from Reese Tech as well. Uh, and she's going to be telling us about Pact in Python. Um, now, this is Sylvia's first presentation, so give her a warm welcome, please. Hi, everyone. My name is Sylvia, and welcome to my talk. Today, I'm going to talk about what PEC is. Integration testing. Have you heard of it? Had enough of it? And perhaps worrying about how fragile it is? This is just a very simple network, because the complexity is not even near to what we're normally dealing with. And this is a section of our production network program that diagram, it looks pretty full on. Sometimes we need to rely on other dependency to test a single service. And when there's something not right with the service, it could be our code that's buggy, or sometimes it could be the network issue, or even because someone changed the data in the database, that's nothing to do with our code. And we could have been spent a lot of time to investigate before knowing that. Well, today I'm going to share with you another way of testing and hopefully that can help you escape out of that mess. This is the first time that I'm giving a talk to more than 10 people, so please bear with me if there's any hiccups. Also, I do acknowledge that there are people that understand and have explored deeper into this topic compared to me, but what I would like to share here is the experience and the learning journey about pack testing within our organisation. So PAC is a contract testing tool. It also referred to as a testing framework that supports consumer-driven testing. It is used to ensure that the transaction between two API services is performed in a mutually agreed manner. I'll be referring to these services as a consumer and provider in this talk. PAC is used to verify both consumer and provider are having a commonly shared understanding about the request and the response that will be passing between them. We are only testing the single transaction between these two services, not the entire network. Once all the connection has been verified by PAC, we can confident that end-to-end -end testing has been covered. To complete a PAC, there is a two-step process. The consumer needs to create a test that will declare the expected response from the provider and the result is registered into a PEC file. The provider will then verify the PEC file when running the test. The PECs include the request from the consum consumer and the minimum expected response from the provider. So PEC is a consumer driven testing tool. That means this is all started with the consumer running the unit test, then generating and registering the interaction of the transaction in the PEC file. Then the PEC file will be, will be published to a place where we call the PEC broker. The provider will retrieve the PEC file from the PEC broker and verify it. I'll come back to the PEC broker later. Here is an example of the call to the user lookup service to retrieve the full name of a given user. There is a function here to get the base URL for the user lookup service, and we'll see the reason for this in a short moment. To test this code, the unit test will be something like this. It is using monkey patch to mock the request for the return data, but it could be better. After we pip install the pack Python, we can mock it with the pack mock. And the pack mock will look like this. It will record the interaction with the provider for verification purpose. And it will also state the expected response that the provider will be respond with. So at first, we need to declare a pack as a PyTest fixture. And this is how we declare the consumer and the provider. 
The pack Python executes a Ruby server at the background. And this is the lines that managed it. The Ruby server handles and verifies the request from the consumer unit test. Remember the get URL function earlier? We set it up that way so, can, so we can mock it for the Ruby server here. The interaction declared the request from the consumer and the response from the provider. This mock is useful for a single unit test. It could be more useful if we can use it for multiple unit tests. We can make it more flexible with some tool in the pack toolkit. Here is the example that we use term matcher so that the mock can be used in other unit tests with different usernames. This is how the pack file has been generated as JSON file. The font on these slides may be a bit too small for reading because I want to fit the whole pack file in there. And I wasn't expecting you to reading from this now. I'll explain the next session as we go on. So because this pack file is generated as a JSON file, it means that this can support cross-language testing, like between Ruby, Java, JavaScript, Python, and other. It allows services that are written in different program language to be tested in a common format. In our organization, we have Java team and Python team testing each other pack file interactively. So how could be even better? If you're paying attention, you can notice that I mentioned a Ruby server somewhere earlier. Here's another alternative, Patman. It is a pure Python version that powered by RISTEC. It allows mocking directly rather than using a background server. It also gives us, it also has some better approach on the verification process as well as the better explanation on the error message when something's not right. I'll show you my example later on. So it, here's another example. We are posting to a user service to update the details for a given user. This is how we unit test the code by using a generic mock. But instead of generic mock, we can use a pack mock. The fixture of this pack is the same as the earlier, so I was keeping that part here. To make this test more flexible for other tests, we can mock the rules this time, rather than specific values. We can achieve the result by using the light matcher class from the pack toolkit. So now the mock is only paying attention to the data type and not the actual value that the consumer mentioned in the unit test. And again, here's the pack file that has been generated in the JSON format. It is important to keep in mind that null is not the same as none, not empty string. These are the types that are different and need to be handled separately. But life is more fun than that. How about other data types? like date, or even future date. How can we express a future date for the interaction if the future date is one of the fundamental requirements for a particular service to fulfill the request? And our team will kindly request our consumer to publish a really, really, really future date in the pack. So when the pack files get to be verified in the near future, or at least the time that our team is still there, the future date is still future enough. The next specification of the pack is going to address this. So, what else does a consumer need to do here? As a consumer, we have to ensure that all the service calls to the provider has been tested. In our team, this has been achieved by setting the full testing coverage as one of the requirements for the code commit. This is not only giving us the confidence that all the code has been tested, it's also giving us the assurance that all the interaction to the provider has been registered. And most importantly, the provider is aware of this as well. When the consumer is running the unit test, the pack file will generate it as the artifact. Then the pack file is published to the pack broker. And when the provider is to run the verification, this will retrieve the pack file from the pack broker, then run the pack verifier to verify it. 
This is how we run the pet verify in the pack Python way. The pack URL, provider base URL, and the provider state setup URLs are the arguments that need to be provided for the pack provider, the sorry, pack verifier command. And this is how we run the pack verifier in the Pacman way. The provider name, provider base URL, and provider setup is still the same mandatory as the previous pet verifier, but it also pulled a pet file from the pet broker for a provider. And also we can run this for a locally stored pet file if we want to run the testing locally, or just run the verifier for a single consumer from the broker, because sometimes you can have multiple consumer to your service. This is uploading the verification result for that given version of the provider back to the pet broker. It also has some other useful argument like help, so feel free to poke around them. Here is the example of the result that pet verifier gives us, and of course we are using the petman version here. We can also set the pet broker URL on the environment, so we are not seeing the pet broker URL here as well. It is running the pet verifier on the version 1.2.5 of the user service on the local host port 8000. And this is the endpoint to set up the provider states. I'll touch the provider state later on as well. It's indicated interaction from all the consumers, some requests that has been passed and fulfilled, some of them that's failed and fail for different reasons. Again, as a provider, first we need to ensure that the consumer is calling the service correctly with the correct payload, parameters, or even the HTTP methods. Further than that, provider also need to make sure that we are returning the agreed and expected response to the consumer. Here is a scenario that we have been through in the past before PAC. The consumer is calling the user service to update the birth date for a given user. The birth date was set as ISO date format, which you can see from the unit test here. But the user service has a birth date as a number. Yes, because user service is taking birth date as epoch date. And because the consumer is using a generic mock for the user service, this error was not discovered until we ran the code in the production. If we were using pet mock, we would have discovered this before go live, because the pet verification result would alert us. As a provider, where we are verifying the pet file from the consumer, we sometimes need resources like database contents, environment variables, or even maybe need to consume some other downstream services to able to complete the request. We need to mock this downstream service call because they are not part of this interaction that we're testing with. But how do we know what to mock? Here comes the purpose of the provider state. And because this is a consumer driven testing, the provider state is coming from the consumer. When the consumer is registering the pack, it will also need to supply with a provider state so that the provider can set up the relevant data for the verification. For example, the consumer is to send a request to delete a user account. Here's the code for the delete request. And the provider state will be something like given there is a user Alex assist, and when the user lookup service is to verify this pack, it will go ahead and set up the user Alex, then run the pack to make sure that the interaction has been processed correctly as expected. Pack verification is a stateless process. This means that it is slightly different from the unit testing, which is isolated to each other. It is important to make sure that when the provider is setting up the data for the verification process, this is happening in a non-production endpoint. This can be controlled by different project settings. 
our team is taking another extra steps to provide even more protection, which is a simple check at the object counts on the database before doing the manipulation of the data for the provider state setup. And we are assuming that the production database has more than two entries in there. Pet broker. Pet broker is a tool that provides the ability to gathering and sharing the pack file, as well as the verification results. It is a RESTful API that lets us to navigate around the list of consumer and provider. Here is a section of our pack broker relationship. The phone is not so great, so I'll just show some features here. Here is an example of a single pack file. It also auto generates some documentation for each of them. It is also storing the verification results that has been run for a different version of a consumer and provider. It's helped us to visualize the relationship between the services that register against it. Here's a glance of our current network diagram that all the services have been registered on our pet broker. Please do not try to read this. <laughs> we can also pull the data from the pet broker to consolidate some more useful information that we need. This is a section of our team dashboard that's showing the pet verification results. There's one of the future in the pet broker called Can I Deploy? It can give us a hand of checking if the code is okay to be deployed to a particular environment. And the command to run is something like this. So where do we go from here? We just need to pit and sort them and go and have fun exploring the pet world. Today, I've shown you a few things about PAC as an alternative to the integration testing, some responsibilities from the consumer side as well as the provider side of a single transaction. I've also shared with you some of the learning that we have been encountered during my exploration about PAC in Python. Here's some reference link that I'm referring to along the way. Thank you for having me and I hope you enjoy it. Thank you. Thank you, Sylvia. Now, Thank Sylvia you. has asked that we don't take questions on mic, so um, if you'd like to talk to Sylvia after the talk, that she's more than welcome to talk, uh, more than happy to talk to you uh, after the talk. Mm -hmm. But first, a, a gift from the organisers of the conference, your very first of many, I hope, PyCon AU mug. Thank you. Thank you again, Thank Sylvia. You.